Well, we're doing this. Recording. We're live. All right. Um, hey, everybody. Hello, and welcome to episode number two. Kate, you're 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 in our first professional. We have a guest podcast today, so um, honored to be your you, first. You should guest. feel pretty important. Yeah. So, um, for folks that um, haven't heard of Jussel before, we are only on episode number two. Uh, Jussel is a community platform for job seekers to come together, share insights, tell some great stories, and share some tips and tricks that may help you land your next role. Uh, our goal here is to have authentic conversations with folks who have been out there, folks like recruiters, like Kate, uh, people on a job seeker journey, career coaches, startup advisors, and we might even have some therapists here for those really tough days that we know you all are having sometimes. Uh, I'm your host, Ernie Raposa. I work in technology by day and have a small practice as a career and leadership coach. I am passionate about helping people succeed, and I get immense satisfaction um, out of helping people think through their next big challenge. I'm also one of the co-founders of Jessel, uh, this community that we built for folks looking for their next uh, adventure in work and life. Our special guest today, as I mentioned, is Kate Lewis. Kate is CEO of Connections Consulting Partners. Welcome, Kate. Thank you for having me, Ernie. I'm honored to be your first guest. I'd love to help you grow. Yes. We're so aligned in so many ways. I love what Jessel's plan and vision is. Yes. You, you, you actually were one of the first um, uh, people, uh, the first person I reached out to when I started thinking about this, because as I was networking out here in the Raleigh area, you were everywhere. Uh, like where, where is Kate not plugged in? Uh, so when, uh, my friends and I started thinking about this company, you were one of the first people we thought about, um, as, as helping us get, get started here. And you've been awesome in, in showing us the way. I'm super, super glad to have you here as our first guest. Thank you. Honestly, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm honored and, and thrilled that you thought of me and helping people in their career transitions and networking is my, is the name of my game, right? It's what yeah. I do, it's what I love. And. It's honestly how I got to where I'm at with my new firm, Connections Consulting Partners, which we are actually a year old today. Congratulations. Um, woohoo. So woohoo. Made it through yeah. the first year. So um, yeah, my focus has been for the last 15 years, IT staffing and recruiting and mm -hmm. helping companies find the right talent to solve their business challenges and technical gaps and skills. Um, and helping coach uh, executives and leaders through career transitions has become a passion of mine, as well as supporting women re-entering the workforce. And now I get to do it for myself instead of for someone else. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And you you talked about this, and I, I don't know if you use those words, uh, the Jerry Maguire moment is how I think about it, where you're working for a big company, you had this big job, you had a big team, and you decided, listen, i I, I, I want to do this a different way. And is that something you can, you can share a bit yeah. about that journey you went through? Yeah. So I, I've had the opportunity over 15 years working for several well-known, well-respected, great staffing firms and recruiting agencies and consultancies. And um, I had moved my way up into leadership and was managing the Raleigh market for a staffing firm. I had a pretty significant team there and we made it through the great the, you know, the, the COVID pandemic and going remote. And if you haven't had to lead a team during that kind of uh, period of time, then what, where have you even lived and have you even been a leader, right? Um, there's a lot of burnout that was happening. And um, I was a part of the great resignation last year. I decided that um, my mental health was, was taking a hit. And um, it takes a lot of energy to be that positive, optimistic leader for a team when there's so much uncertainty and fear happening. Yeah. Um, I'm also a proud working mom. I have two young children and I um, had a nanny for our, the first eight years of my kid's life and had decided that I wanted to be more involved. And so I uh, took the opportunity and the chance to bet on myself and go out on my own as an entrepreneur to provide my Self and my family with more freedom and flexibility and hopefully financial control yeah. and started my firm connections consulting partners so um, I had found that over the last few years um, the recruiting industry had become really commoditized mm. and transactional and 
no one really cared about the candidate and no one really represented the candidate during the experience. Sure. And um, recruiting firms were, there's a lot of pressure for them to make a profit. And it was about doing deals and focusing on transactions. And recruiting yeah. for me has always been a relationship business. And um, I really wanted to put the, the relationship and the tra- and take the transaction out of it and focus on the people. So yeah. doing it my way, starting my firm and um, focusing on referrals and networking and growing my you know relationships and doing right by people and taking the time to actually learn what a candidate really wants in their next opportunity and making sure that that opportunity is aligned with their passions and their values and is a good fit. Because recruiting at the end of the day is matchmaking and it's a relationship game it shouldn't mm-hmm. be treated like a transaction that's great and and i've, I've heard you characterize that as uh, sometimes job seekers feel like a product and they're treated like a product um and and having been on both sides of that uh transaction if you will um it's it's it, it's hard out there yeah. yeah um so when you when you left did you um and this is the last Jerry Maguire joke I'll make, I promise. Uh, uh, <laughs> did you print out a memo or a mission statement and leave it on everybody's desk at your last company and, and, and have everybody follow you out? Or were you just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do this? No, actually, yeah. you know, um, you never burn a bridge. The market yeah. is small. And yeah. I cared about people there and yeah. cared about people on my team. And this was a personal choice and a personal sure. decision. And Beyond the fact that I have a non-solicitation agreement, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I want people to stay if they're happy there. And I, was, yeah. I will never say anything negative about that company or the people that worked there. It was just not where I needed to be at the next step. Right. And right. I think this pandemic caused a lot of us to take a really close look at our lives and, you know, focus on our new priorities and um, work-life balance and, you um, you know, working remotely is a blessing for some and it's very difficult challenge for others. And right. for me, it's really, you know, been a great fit. It gives me more time to do other things that I need to do that I was wasting in my commute time. Right. Um, right. But no, yeah. I would, I didn't burn any bridges. I didn't go flaming out. I hopefully left very positively, calmly, and professionally, because Mm -hmm. you never know when you're going to work with those people again. (laughs) For sure. For sure. You need references. (laughs) Well, and, and the great resignation is, is one of the reasons why uh, Dan and I started Jussel uh, when we, when we saw the, the, the Dan will share his story in other, uh, in other podcasts around how he left where he was uh, Mm -hmm. thinking he would just get a job in a couple of weeks. And that turned into many months and you work with people in transition all the time who are on similar journeys and uh, not everyone is as lucky as you where, or as resourceful as you, where you could just go out and create this new world for yourself. Um, so, so we see people who see a great resignation happening and they're like, yeah, I'll do that too. And then they find themselves wondering how they're going to pay their mortgage because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hustle out there. Right. Um, so, uh, so that, that's, uh, I I'd say even for folks who might be looking to, to follow in your footsteps, uh, I know we're here talking about kind of tips and tricks and, and things that, that folks should be thinking about on their, on their, uh, job search journey. But I think whether today or in another call, uh, you'd, you'd be a great person to share how you got started and, and, um, what, what the first year has been like and, and what that journey was like from that very secure nine to five ish job to you're the captain of your own boat. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But you're also a hundred percent commission. You have to be comfortable being in sales yeah. and being a hundred percent commission because no one's guaranteeing your paycheck. Right? right. I don't have to ask for paid time off to go on vacation with my family to Disney world, but there is no paid time off, you know, so um, I think making sure you're financially ready before you quit a job to go to another job or to start your own company is really important, right? They say you should have six months of a salary saved because it can take people depending on, especially with the more senior you are in your career, the longer your job transition should take you. If you're still an individual contributor producer that's in a tech or a high demand skill set, you probably have more of a chance to, to catch a new job quickly. Um, 
but yeah, I wouldn't quit without having a plan and being financially set up and sound. And I think one of the other things is um, having a sound network and connections and a base of referrals, right? Um, I have spent the last 15 years of my career purposefully networking and cultivating uh, a, a, a network and connections, especially here locally in the triangle market. You mentioned it yourself. People were like, you know, oh, Kate's everywhere. Or do you know Kate? Or you should go talk to Kate, right? And, <laughs> right. Um, I've kind of built this reputation of being a connector um, mm -hmm. and referring and connecting people is my passion and now my business, hence the name Connections Consulting Partners, right? And right. Uh, I, what, is, what, is, what, is, yeah, what is that like being at the center of, of that? Because you are, you have kind of become this go-to person. Um, that must be pretty cool from a, like, as you build your, your personal brand. Um, what does that mean for you to be the connector? I mean, I've always been the person that just was naturally be like, oh, you should meet this person. You have this thing in common, right? Yeah, you, yeah. you both went to the same university. You have similar skill set, right? Like you and John, we were just talking, right? Like right. you remind me of each other. Have, do you know each other? You should meet. And just, I think it just came naturally to me to connect people and to form introductions. And while I was employed at all those different companies um, in staffing, I still every day on LinkedIn would get requests to, do you know someone in this field? Can you introduce me to someone in this field? And I would do introductions and help people network or, you know, I'm looking for a group and association to join. What associations are you aware of and, and who do you, who do you know? And um, so I think just building a network, getting involved in your community proactively while you're still employed prepares you yeah. when you decide to go out on your own as an entrepreneur or, make a career change because most people get jobs through someone that they know. They follow a good leader that left their company and is now a new manager at a new company and they bring them along or, you know, follow a friend or, you know, get there through the employer referral and the network. Yeah. Is the way but, in. but that is, that is such a great point, Kate, around keeping your network fresh. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm even like that with my friends. Like, I feel like I'm Julie cruise ship director because I'm always saying, Hey, when are we going to get together? I know I'm 700 miles away. All my friends are up in the Boston area. I'm still the one that, that, um, pokes them into having a, 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 a let's do a weekend together or something like that. Uh, and, um, awesome. I, when I first moved down here, uh, from Boston five years ago, uh, I just found things to get involved in because I just, naturally like that there's happy hours and things to do and meet new people um so i think for people who are naturally extroverted that's a second nature thing i think for folks who maybe aren't as into that and only do that when they need a job they're setting themselves up for a tougher job search because they're starting from zero right yeah. um whereas if you're just out there and, and you're building your just who you are authentically out with these the people in your, whether it's your virtual network or your local network here, um, when it's time to make that jump or something happens, um, folks tend to rally around you and, and, and help you get to the next thing. Yeah. And I think it is a skill. You're right. Introvert yeah. versus extrovert. It's a skill yeah. that needs to be developed. And I think it's also a necessity and start where somewhere where you're comfortable, right? If you're yeah. Uh, you know, into gaming, like maybe you join a meetup group of gamers because maybe your ultimate goal would be, I want to get into game design and there's a lot of great gaming companies in town. Or if you're into security and you're techie and you want to go join security, like start with something that you're comfortable with, right. but it's about being a part of a community. And I think it also just shows that you're focused on continuous learning and continuous development which is also yeah. a great skill set to showcase when you're looking for a new job and about to be in a transition is that you've made the investment in yourself. Right. Um, and just, you know, the community service aspect, right? I do a ton of volunteering. Some of it is serving on board of directors of tech associations and networking associations. Um, also, you know, some of it's aligned with my natural skill sets, like job seekers and coaching for like dress for success program. But I think that you, you can even be involved through your children's sports teams as a coach and get to know all the kids and the adults on that sports team could lead you to your next job or Cub right. Scout or through your religious affiliation, you know, uh, any place that you join and become a member, you're building a network and community of friends outside of your neighborhood, outside of your family. And everyone here, you know, most people here work in tech or healthcare and government. So right. 
Right. You never know where your next opportunity is going to come from. So I, I, I understand through my time knowing you, Kate, that you are, you are, um, an object in motion at all times. Like, do you ever have this need to, I just want to sit in a room quietly by myself for an evening or, or is that just the worst possible thing you can imagine for yourself? Like, is that something you fantasize about or is that something that you, you think would be a nightmare? Um, I don't do well with silence and alone. <laughs> I don't, I'm not good company for myself. I mean, even yeah. when I drive home and I'm commuting, I'm like calling people and returning phone calls. I don't do yeah. well with silence. Um, some people recharge that way. I actually yeah. have to force myself to be alone. So I am going to the Umstead spa for mother's day in a few days for two hours to have that spa treatment. And I won't talk to anyone, but I think two hours is about the the extent of that for me. Um. Yeah. Uh, this might be a little TMI here, but my wife and I will occasionally get a couple's massage and um, I am a talker. You know this. Um, some people go and get a massage and they don't talk at all. I'm just like, yeah. that, that, that is, sounds like the worst possible thing. And, and my wife will be at the table over next door to me, not talking to her massage therapist. I, I think that's quite rude, but she thinks I'm, she wants me to just shut up already. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a person that I don't know nothing about and I need to, we need to have a conversation. Um, so yeah. Actually, the massage table is the only place that I'm quiet. I do, not <laughs> want them. I do not need them to get to know me. I do not need to share about my life. I need them to relieve my stress and I need to pretend that I am on an island and okay. uh, you know, relaxing. And if my husband who doesn't like to get massages joins me, we have massage appointments at the same time in different rooms because I don't want there to be other people there. So. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So there's limits, All right. there's limits All right. but it's about an hour <laughs> time, once in a while. And the Umstead is my favorite place, which is a local spa for people that aren't in Raleigh, but it's my favorite place. So for someone as busy as you with so many activities, I'm in awe of all the things that you're involved in. How do you, like, do you have any kind of secret system that you use to manage the time or like, is it just a Google calendar or some like a journal or what do you do? I wish. I mean, if you were going to ask me what my challenge is, it would be setting boundaries and saying no. Um, (laughs) I think I need to hire a personal assistant. Um, no, I, I, I don't know that I'm great at that. I think yeah. that I, I only have one speed. It's like 150 miles an hour, like a Porsche down a racetrack. And um, I stay busy and I fill yeah. my calendar. Like when I tell someone like I can't meet because I'm booked this week, I mean that like every waking minute of a possible work day until children are home and dinner needs to be prepared is booked and I can't. Right. Right. And so that would be my area of opportunity for growth uh, is better <laughs> time management or yeah. maybe outsourcing to a personal assistant. They have these people Ooh. that you can hire now, fractional, you know, mm-hmm. taskmasters that can do that stuff for you. Yeah. If, if you've ever, if you've ever read, um, the four hour week work week by Tim Ferriss, uh, this is going back a ways. This is a, an older book. Uh, he's a, a huge advocate of, of virtual assistants to, to offload all of the minutia of your life. Um, so you can focus on the, the big juicy things. Um, yeah. but I've, I've haven't done it myself. Maybe if I get as busy as you someday, I'll, I'll give that a whirl. Busy is not uh, good though. Right. I think some people wear it like as a badge of honor and it's, mm, you know, honestly true. becoming an entrepreneur, one of the goals was to not be as busy, <laughs> continue to say yes to new business opportunities and, um, volunteering on new board of directors because, I just get energy from other people. Helping other people right. is what um, serves me. So well, and and this for the job seekers listening to this, um, that that's uh, something to touch on is that you also have a you have a, a leader in transition group that is another one of your things you do. Do um, mm-hmm. you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So that was something that started about four years ago while I was still employed. Um, I had clients at the time that were um, my hiring managers that I had known for a while that found themselves for the first time in their career being um, uh, restructured out in a job seeker mode after a 10, 15, 20 year career at a major tech corporation um, because of change in leadership. And 
you know, they find themselves having never had to look for a job. They haven't had to write a resume. They've always been the interviewer, not the interviewee. Right. right. That's a big um, change. Yeah. Have it networked, right? Because I, I found that while people are employed, they're very busy during all their waking hours and they don't necessarily prioritize and focus on the networking that we just talked about, how crucially important that is. So they're very unprepared and uncomfortable when they become uh, a job seeker and they now need to build a network. Um, and so I started coaching them through that transition and just giving them advice that seems to come natural for me as a recruiter, right. About LinkedIn and resumes and networking. And also one of the things people tend to struggle with is asking for referrals and asking for help. It's a humbling experience when you are a job seeker and you may have to reach out to someone that used to work for you that's now at a new company and say, hey, do you like your new company? Is there an employee referral program? Are you willing to put my name in? You know, did you enjoy working with me? And would you want to work with me again? And is right. there a way that you could help me get in the door at your new company? Because I now am in the market. Um, and so there's this stigma about, you know, I shouldn't need help. I don't need to ask for help. And it's a real ego buster to be in that vulnerable type of position. And so a lot of the coaching that I do is around that it's okay that you need help. And I'm think if you, if people knew that you were in a position of need and that you were in a job transition, instead of you maybe trying to hide that from the world by not changing your LinkedIn, there's probably a lot of people that would want to help you and want to work with you again, that you could land a job a lot faster. Right. Um, so that's what the purpose of that group is. It's a support and accountability group. We meet weekly for... Uh, to know that you're not alone because being a job seeker is a very, like we talked about, embar- sometimes shameful, embarrassing, de- like, you know, uh, demoralizing experience, right? It's hard with all the rejection that you face when you apply to a hundred jobs and don't receive an interview and um, you feel very alone and isolated. And this is a su- support and accountability group. And we hopefully give people actionable tips and make them feel not alone and help them build confidence to go after the jobs that they need and want. That's great. And, and we can actually flash that if you've got a, a link or an email or a website, if, if folks uh, are interested in joining that, um, we can flash that up on the podcast. And um, uh, 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 I don't know if you have a limit of, uh, or if you're maxed out already, um, but I've heard great things about that, that group that you run, is it by, by, Monthly? Is it monthly or is it is it weekly? That weekly. Weekly Thursday okay. mornings. Yeah. And we were meeting in person for our audience that's here in Raleigh, Durham, mm-hmm. RTP at the Frontier. Yeah. Um, I can make it virtual over Zoom. We've had to do Zoom a couple of times because of uh, sicknesses, but sure. Um, yeah, I don't have that ready for me right now, but we can post. Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. Edit that yes, in yes, yes, yes. It up on uh, the screen. <laughs> there will be editing for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and I, I just noticed, too, I, I didn't have this in gallery view. So uh, the first part of our podcast is is going to be all of you, actually, with a little oh. tiny Ernie head above it. So we'll, we'll see what we can do there, too. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Episode number two. Extreme close-up HD, you know, <laughs> view of all the pores on my face. I'm excited about that. If I wasn't uncomfortable enough, Ernie, thank you. Well, it's it's fixed for the rest of the, the podcast, and and we'll see what sort of uh, 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 podcast wizardry we can we can yeah. do after the fact. Will there be a blooper reel at the end as well? Uh, maybe, yeah. After the credits, yeah. Um, so let's see. So. Um, one of the, when you and I first started talking about um, having conversations like this for, for folks out there uh, who might need an extra hand, um, you rattled off a whole list of tools that are out there for recruiters. Um, and, and this is going back to how job seekers are kind of treated like a product, right? Um, and there's LinkedIn and there's Glassdoor and there's these other um, um, tools out there that that uh, folks can sign up for and submit their their um, their job applications and such. Um, but as far as um, being able to make sure like your resume matches what the job is, I think you you talked about job scan. There there's some other neat tools that are out there for folks to uh, up their game. 
uh, that uh, you had a pretty extensive list and I wanted to see if there were any particular ones that, that, that are, are the big ones that people should be looking at if they're just really starting out in their job search or, or starting to have a hard time and are looking for um, something else to do to, to um, increase their likelihood of landing that next thing. Yeah, I think job scan is one of those things. It's and it's a software that I think you have to purchase. I don't know that there's a free version of it, but it takes the job description, scans your resume for keyword matching, and makes suggestions of how you could tweak it to have a better, you know, match. So you're tricking the algorithms into thinking you're a fit. Because yeah. I think one of the um, biggest mistakes people make is they use one generic job or one generic resume to submit to all the jobs. Um, I think uh, building relationships with a bunch of different recruiters, particularly at staffing agencies is helpful because we work with a lot of different clients and we don't just represent one company and one brand, but Mm -hmm. it's really important on LinkedIn to fill in your full LinkedIn profile and have a lot of information about the skills that you really have, the strengths that you have. You can fill in that whole summary section. Don't just use it as an advertisement for the company that you work for. Really, you know, sell what you do and what your strengths are and what your values are, including having endorsements for your skills and recommendations out there. I think the open to work on LinkedIn is important. Um, There's this big stigma because it puts this green banner around you, but there's a way to open it only to recruiters on LinkedIn. Yep. So only people that pay for the LinkedIn recruiter license see that you're open to work. And then the details that you put in there matter. And as a recruiter, I look for that. I can filter for open to work. You're more likely to respond to me. And I can see you're open to work for a specific title in my location, remote or hybrid or on site, you know, full time or contract, like all that information and really helps you you know, get to the top of a LinkedIn recruiter search. Um, Indeed, I think is the second best place. I don't see a lot of recruiters still paying for the monsters and career builders. I don't know that they really kept up. It's like Mm -hmm. Blockbuster when Netflix came to the scene and, you know, or Comcast now that we can just buy, you know, Paramount Plus and Disney Plus and buy an app. Um, Glassdoor, I think, the, t- the local tech associations, NC Tech here in North Carolina, the local tech journals, the Triangle Business Journal, again, here in North Carolina, following who's hiring, who's merging, who's getting acquired, who just got funding, who's moving to town, just knowing and keeping up with the news, going to all those meetup groups and associations and events. Right. Um, professional groups, you know, there are job boards for a lot of those companies. Um, I always think it's helpful if you're following your target companies on LinkedIn or on Twitter, so you know what's new in the news. Um, I pay for Zoom Info. There's other, you know, Seek Out. There's other tools Mm -hmm. that you can pay for to gain access to some contact info um, to go beyond just applying blind. I think. Right. There's a lot of different tips, actually. There's, I don't yeah. know if that helps, but. Well, and I think I think even just exploring the network. Um, yeah, one of the things I did when I was starting my coaching practice was I had to practice a lot and I just tapped into my network to say, Hey, listen, I'm doing this thing. We haven't talked in a while. It'd be great to reconnect. Oh, and by the way, maybe I can help you with something. Um, and, and that's actually how I got, how, how I'm here <laughs> with, with, uh, uh, we started talking about this idea. Um, so, so you don't be shy. I, I, I'd say my advice to folks is, is to not be shy about re-establishing some old connections, especially if they're at your target company. And um, most folks have some sort of, even if, even if they um, aren't your biggest fan, um, most companies have a referral bonus. So yeah. if, if they're like, yeah, you know, he was all right, but you know, as long as you're not a bank robber or anything, um, uh, generally folks will, will, Help, help out of greedy self-interest <laughs> will we'll, we'll help you get in the door. So um, that's something to consider too. I don't know if people always think through that, that lots of companies have uh, just processes and programs like that. Yeah. And asking them, what is it really like to work at yeah. this new company that you work Absolutely. for? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of applying, but I want to know, is the culture as great as they say they are? You know, they win these best places to work awards, but what is it really like to work there? Or right. what are the benefits like? Or what is the leadership like? Um, getting to know more of an insider scoop. And then maybe that lends itself to 
hey, you know, is there an employee referral program or do you know the recruiter? Could you put my resume, even if there's not an employee referral program, just can you put my resume on the desk of the recruiter? It gets yeah. more attention that way. Um, and the glass doors and the, the other ways that like rank the companies and give you some insider tips. There's one called In Her Sight here out of Durham. And it's a women's perspective of content on what it's like to work at companies and the perks that they have and what's the maternity leave and the work from home flexibility and are there women in leadership represented and stuff. In um, her site is, is in the, her site. Mm-hmm. okay, I'll flash that. Yeah. 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 And there's ways to buy, you know, salary guides. I think, uh, you know, understanding what your market value is worth just because you, what you've been being paid, if you've been at the same company for 10 years, there's maybe a chance that your street value is worth a lot more right now. Right. Look at the house sure. and they're through the roof. So salaries have matched that. I think they're, up about 20% from what I saw in 2019. So, well, and what about regionally, Kate, you're, you're probably trapped into the, sorry, tapped into this, uh, where, um, it used to be that you had these different, some, you had some, let's say salary arbitrage where, um, some companies used to think of RTP as almost like halfway to India where, where, um, Hey, we're, we're in this high price area. We'll ship everybody down to Raleigh. Now that everybody's working all over the place, has that been diluted somewhat where, where salaries are kind of starting to harmonize across the, let's just say the U S right. Yeah. I think it depends. Some companies still believe that they need local people and that someday they're going to go back into an office and they're not really to really consider like the, really remote non-local candidates um but where remote it doesn't matter where you live as long as you have internet access can live anywhere in the united states there's there are lower cost you know states and cities comparatively to us right you can go very rural in alabama and probably find someone less than a cost to live in raleigh um but uh yeah i think it's worth asking what the salaries are salary guides are a good place to start. There's places that you can look at cost of living differentials and stuff as well. Um, cool. Joining the meetup groups, joining the professional associations, volunteering, being a part of the community, serving on a board of directors, I think is a really key, key thing um, so that people can attest you know, to you and that you're really involved um, and uh, that you did, you know, made a difference somewhere. Yeah. Well, and, and this is all great content and, and I'd like to talk a little more about your, your personal journey. You have a year under your belt of Kate Inc. Um, (laughs) What, what, if anything, were you surprised by, and let's say positively, um, were were you surprised by, and we can talk about the flip side of that um, in in a bit. (laughs) Um, I'm surprised that by the amount of referrals and support right. for me and my business without really needing to do a lot of, I'm not buying leads or doing a lot of sales and marketing. I mean, I'm always selling, but I, that's my background, but i um, just surprised by the support for my business and um, that I'm able to, I don't know, ask for help. Like, Hey, this is what I'm doing now. But people are like, Oh, I see you have a new job. What is connections? And they don't know it's my right. business, even though I kind of, thought I wrote that I was an entrepreneur, but <laughs> I guess I look like a bigger business than I am. Um, so I'm just surprised by the amount of support and leads. And it really has shown the value of my building of this network over the last 15 years paying off and having me be at the right point where I'm ready to do this um, is the positive. Yeah. What about the flip side of that? Anything that you were surprised by that um, um, wasn't as... The bound, we talked um, about the time management and boundaries and me learning yeah. how to say no. There's a book yeah. on that I need to read. Um, I think the hardest part for me was figuring out how to price my services. Mm. Um, a lot of the last 15 years has been me developing this experience and expertise, becoming this market expert, becoming this go-to person. And I was giving away a lot of my advice and referrals for free before. So it was kind of hard for me to figure out, like, how do I make a business out of my expertise now? And how do I now charge for um, this knowledge that I've cultivated um, over the last 15 years? Um, 
and what was the right price for that knowledge. And I found that I had gone to a lot of people in my network and I'm like, this is what I'm doing now. And this is what I'm thinking of charging. And would you pay me this? And, um, you know, just trying to figure out the right pricing was the yeah. hardest. And, and I've been seeing some of this out in reading on LinkedIn. And, and I think the, the metric I've been seeing is, is well, if too many people are saying, yes, you're not charging enough, um, but uh, one of the people I follow said it should be 50-50. Um, and I don't know how accurate that is based on what you've been reading out there, but um, mm-hmm. you, you obviously don't want to be driving people away, but you don't want to be um, not having any time for yourself and, and not being able to uh, pay rent. So, Yeah, luckily I have a spouse that helps with that, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is the other thing I am the risk taker. I'm allowed to take this flexibility because I have a steady income coming in from the other. A, a supportive spouse or a supportive partner is, is key for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the other advice. And that's the positive about going out on my own is just, you know, the board of advisors of friends and mentors and family and spousal support of like, you're going to do this and, and you're, we're going to give, I was going to give myself a year. And if it didn't work out and I didn't make money and I started losing money, I could always go apply for another job and go back right. to a corporate job if I needed to. Right. There's always a fallback and a parachute. So um, that's interesting too. I also think the hardest part for me, and thank you for challenging me out of my growth is the social media and video content yeah. <laughs> because I've always been an in-person networker. I uh, put me in a room. I can walk into a room full of strangers and leave with five friends, right? And I right. And, and, and you're in the front of the room in some of the the, the meetings I've been at. You're you're yeah. leading the conversation. Yeah. Right. I'm st- I'm the host or the you know the, the president or the speaker of the organization that's meeting, right? And um, and so I I feel much more confident in person making friends and meeting people and talking to people as an extrovert. Um. But for me, the intimidating piece is the recording video content to make widely available on social media platforms. And um, I'm by far, I'm not, I'm far from a social media influencer. I don't have a lot of followers on Facebook and Instagram. So I don't really know how to cultivate that side of being an, an entrepreneur in a business. So that's the other surprising thing I learned. Yeah, we, we haven't taken Jessel to TikTok or have, we haven't done any, we haven't done any dances or made any songs yet. That's, that's on the roadmap somewhere. We'll, oh, we'll is it? Yeah. <laughs> My kids would be mortified if I was. <laughs> <laughs> but, but even like the Instagram videos and this type of content is important to yeah. reach an audience. And I appreciate the opportunity because I wouldn't have done this myself. I'm not yeah. Yeah. confident and comfortable on video. So. Well, we're super glad uh, you were able to join us and get out of your comfort zone a bit, Kate. We, we do have some um, goofy, quirky questions we, we okay. like to ask people. Um, well, we are going to be asking people, starting with you. Um, uh, question number one is, if you were stranded on a deserted island and could bring food, there is a foodie in our group, what would it be? Um... Well, I can't live without coffee and wine, but that's not food. Um, I'd probably go for chocolate, though. Maybe yeah. you can't really live on chocolate. <laughs> I beg to differ. Yeah, the chocolate, yeah. coffee, and wine would have. I mean, those would be my top three things. <laughs> I wouldn't be very yeah. healthy. I don't know if yeah. I'd survive. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be happy. You'd be yeah, happy. There's no people there. It would be miserable yeah. for me. I would. That's be, true. That's Tom true. Tom Hanks talking to the the soccer ball or the coconut, whatever. Yeah. Unsustainable. <laughs> um, well, and, and the other question here is a, a favorite book and or movie uh, that you resonate with um, that will, will help us analyze your personality later. Oh, no, um, I'm, I'm kidding about that last part. We just want to know what your favorite book or movie is. Favorite book or movie. I read a lot of, I, I mean, I read a lot of books. I'm a big Brene Brown fan. Oh, yeah. Um, Daring Greatly. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a big John Gordon fan of positive leadership. Um, mm-hmm. And Jen Hatmaker. Those are probably three of my authors that I have a lot of their books. If I look over at my bookshelf, um, I read a lot of leadership books over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe I'd start there. And then yeah. movies. I go for comedy, more comedy. Um, 
over like suspense thrillers and things. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge Mel Brooks fan. Encanto, so it's not, it doesn't count. What, what is it? <laughs> Encanto was the last movie I watched with the kids. It doesn't count. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, um, my, my wife and I have a very different taste. She likes the suspense, very serious, very dramatic. And I'm more of a slapstick comedy guy. Um, I could watch Mel Brooks movies all day, every day and be totally happy. Uh, but um, yeah, we have to find a happy medium sometimes. Yeah. 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 I like the comedy when I watch movies. Yeah. We're the same. We have TV shows we watch together and TV shows yeah. that we watch separately um, on different room, different rooms and different TVs. Yeah. Um, you, you probably would believe if I told you, like, I don't have a lot of time to watch TV or <laughs> movies. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> so it's well, harder for me to come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kate, um, so, so we'll, we'll wrap up here. Um, but I wanted to just give you the final word. Anything you want to leave people with who are um, starting out their job search, have been on the job search for a while. Final thoughts? Um. You're not alone. Don't get discouraged. Meet all your friends and former colleagues and ask for help. Practice your pitch and stay true to what you really want and what you're looking for. Align the next job with your values and your passions or else you'll be unhappy and you'll be looking and leaving again soon. Awesome. More than one thing of advice. I that was a bunch that. of things. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's, um, we, we can just put that in one big basket. Yeah. We'll just, yeah. Should I have Kate, said it slower so you could have just copied one out? No, it's fine. It's, it's Kate's, Kate's parting words of wisdom. And you're our first guest, so you get me right. Oh, yeah. I can ha- I get more than one word. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. And well, my personality, I, ha- I know what all those things are. It's like out on my LinkedIn profile. The, so the Myers-Briggs, the DISC, and the Clifford Strengths. I oh, love we could have a whole other conversation about that because... Um, it, it, it really helps you identify how to, how to communicate with somebody. Um, yeah. I've taken all of those too. And I wish everybody in the world took one. I think the world would be a, a better place if we could understand uh, how we each see the world uh, uh, differently from one another, or in some cases the same. Uh, but yeah, that's, um, I think we've identified uh, episode X uh, where we'll, we'll talk about assessments. Yeah. Yeah. I think that even going into a new job, it's important to be like, what is my leader's personality types or communication styles or Clifford strengths? And what are mine so that they know how to mentor and lead you and you know how to work with them. And um, like, there's a lot of value in understanding um, where you all are coming from. Right. Yeah. As as onboarding journey, how do we communicate? How how are we motivated? How do we like to be, um, recognized and rewarded. I mean, it's so much of that uh, it, it varies from person to person. And uh, as a leader, you you want to make sure people are, are doing what fills their tank. Um, um, and if you're building a diverse team, uh, it's very important that you don't build a team that looks and sounds and thinks like you, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So we just nailed it. Next podcast. So. Love it. All right. Well, thanks so much for your time. Again, this is Kate Lewis from um, Connections Consulting Partners, uh, Inc., LLC. LLC, yeah. LLC, all right, okay, cool. And we'll flash that up on the screen as well, right here. Um, we'll see you next time, Kate. Thanks so much for the time. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to coming back. Awesome.